Hey everybody, welcome back to the Revelation Bible Study. My name is David Kenny, and I am the pastor of Walden Community Church here in Montgomery, Texas. This year, we decided to go through the book of Revelation really slowly, a little bit at a time, a couple verses here and there, maybe eight minutes, 10 minutes uh, a time that we're together. And so we're still right here at the beginning. We're in uh, Revelation chapter two, and we're looking at the letter to the church of Ephesus. And of course, you are more than welcome to read along with us. Um, this church in Ephesus has been persecuted for their faith. They are a large city in Asia, and it was one of the first established churches. It was actually very large and probably an early, what we would call mega church. Ephesus was also uh, a place where uh, a goddess was worshipped. That was the goddess Artemis. Artemis was a fertility goddess, and uh, they had a huge temple to worship her there. And so when the gospel of Jesus starts to become more prominent and it's being uh, spread, of course, the people who worshiped Artemis uh, pushed back against that, and there were riots, there were riots in the city, and they would bully and harass the church in Ephesus. So this church has a lot of rich history, a lot of great things that we've read about the church so far. And you and I might think, that's a great church. Like, you know, if I lived back then, I would want to be a member of the church of Ephesus. But then watch what Jesus says, starting at chapter 2, verse 4. But I have this against you, that you have abandoned the love you had at first. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen. Repent and do the works you did at first. If not... I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. Wow. I mean, after all those good things that we read about last time together, Jesus says, I only have one thing against you. And if you don't fix it, I'll remove your lampstand. In other words, I'll remove your church. I'll remove you. I'll destroy you. It'll be gone. And, and what was the one thing Jesus says that they have to fix? He says, restore the relationship. I want you to return to loving me. God wants them to love him more. Well, not even just more, right? Jesus says, you do all these things and they're great and they're done in my name, but I feel like you don't love me anymore. On paper, perhaps the church checks off all the boxes. They're going through the right motions. And if you were to walk you know, down the street and see them or visit their church website, you would say, man, this church is doing a lot of great stuff. I want to join this church. And Jesus says, yeah, but they don't love me anymore. And without that love, I'll remove this church. It's kind of easy for life to become a series of checks boxes, isn't it? You know, when I was in school, that's all I thought about. Just tell me what I need to do, like the bare minimum to get by and just to get a passing grade. I wanted a passing grade. So sometimes you do that even with your job. Like what's the bare minimum I can do just to keep my head down, just so nobody notices me and I still can collect a paycheck, right? But if that's your only goal, just to keep your head down and do your job, then you can actually lose sight of what it's all about. You can go through the motions at work, you can go through the motions with your kids, you can go through the motions with your spouse, and then you lose sight of the love, right? The passion. Jesus says, lift your head up, look up, right? Look back at me. Remember me? I mean, you built this church because of me, because of the relationship with me. And he says, that's the part that you've forgotten. It's the relationship. That's the important thing, not the checking the boxes. You, Jesus says, you can't do this without love. You know, you think about living a holy life or, or doing all the things that God wants. And that's great. But along the way, you have to make sure that you're staying connected to the Savior, to the love part, or, or the relationship can die. Jesus, you know, the bottom line is, Jesus doesn't want people who obey rules. That's not what he's interested in. He wants people who love, right? And, and we can be guilty of that. I can become guilty of producing, making things, right? Doing, and then I neglect the relationship part. We pursue holiness, we worship, we pray, we read, but we do all those things because 
we love. Jesus says to the church in Ephesus, I want you to restore your first love. He says, remember the height from which you have fallen. Like, remember the first day. Remember how we met. Remember why we are in this relationship. That, that first day when you fell to your knees and you prayed. You know, sometimes we can go on autopilot. We daydream. Sometimes we do that when we drive, right? We just go on autopilot and we kind of space out. But Jesus tells this church, remember. Can you remember that it wasn't just a bunch of doing stuff? It wasn't a checklist when this all first started? You know, my wife and I have been married for 20 years and we've begun this. You know, the remembering. Remembering what it was like a long time ago. Remember what it was like before we had kids? We have those talks. We talk about restaurants that we used to go to, places where we lived. Uh, We had an hour long conversation the other week about our first condo and what it looked like and where the bookshelves were and our upstairs patio. We'll reminisce about vacations and places we've stayed or people we used to know. And it's not just that we miss those days, but we have those conversations so that we don't forget those days. We want to remember those feelings, those moments when we were younger and in the early stages of love. That's what Jesus is asking for. I want you to think right now, if there was a time when you loved God more passionately, what was it like? What was different back then? How old were you? What was happening? in your life? Or could you say, you know what? I actually think I love God more now than ever before. Good. Jesus wants people who love. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.